Here, we will examine how the aggregation of risk principle actually plays out in the critical chain planning process. We start with a traditional critical path plan. In these diagrams, each color represents a different skill category and there is quantity one of each skill category. The first step in the process is to exclude the built-in safety of all the task estimates. A simple rule of thumb is simply to cut the current task durations in half. After the safety has been excluded, resource leveling is applied to eliminate any resource conflicts. So in this illustration, no same color tasks should occur at the same time. Finally, the critical chain is marked. The critical chain is the sequence of both precedence and resource dependent tasks that prevents the project from being completed in a shorter time frame given finite resources. This is the same as the resource constrained critical path using aggressive durations. This slide simply shows the same process in a Gantt chart with technical links shown in red and critical chain elements in yellow. Because the aggregation principle is so important to the success of critical chain, let's return to it. The concept is the same as risk pooling. Most people are familiar with the healthcare insurance situation, where the larger the pool, the lower the cost of the premium. The total cost to all participants should be close to the total cost of the healthcare cost for the participants. Each participant no longer needs to save enough money to be able to pay for all their potential health care needs. The risk spreading of insurance makes it more affordable. Similarly, by pooling the risk over the entire project makes fully protecting each task unnecessary and the sum of the protection needed is less. By applying the aggregation principle, the amount of protection required in a schedule decreases as the number of tasks being protected increases. A series of tasks protected at one location requires less protection than if each task was to be individually protected. The location of the protection is just as important as the amount. So buffers of protection are strategically located in the project plan with a large project buffer at the end of the project. Here is the Gantt chart representation of the critical chain network. Critical chain elements are in yellow. Buffers are elliptical in shape. Now we move on to how critical chain operates in execution. We expect things to not go as planned. As the project progresses, both tasks T1 and T7 essentially finish on time. After task T8 has been worked on for a time, an update is provided that estimates the remaining duration. And this shows an end time of T8, which is later than the original aggressive estimate. In this case, the delay is absorbed by the gap that existed between T3 and T4. When the next update is received, the estimated end date for T8 is even later. This delay affects the rest of the project and impacts the project buffer. Note how task T11 is also affected due to the fact that it uses the same resource as task T8 and T3. So T11 will not get access to this resource until T3 is done with it. But since T6 which is the integration point, is also moved right, there is currently no feeder buffer impact. Let us review. T1 and T7 finished on time. T8's duration was longer than its planned aggressive duration. First portion of T8's delay absorbed by gap between T3 and T4. Rest of delay impacted the project buffer. T11 also affected due to resource constraint. Current project status, 7% complete with 30% buffer consumed. Note, 
many complicated interactions can be occurring, but as we will elaborate, the project manager just needs to monitor buffer impacts, which is much simpler. Here are some perspectives on buffers. Note that they are predictive leading indicators that promote and encourage teamwork. Psychology and sociology teaches us that human behavior is greatly affected by the context or environment the human is in. That is not always obvious because people are actually very good at controlling their environment. Project management teach how team members should perform and how project managers should deal with human relationships to make projects successful. However, most of the time we are trying to change human behavior without changing the environment. Critical path project management creates an environment for people to perform in. Critical chain project management creates a very different environment for people to perform in. Critical chain is a context or environment that promotes the type of behaviors that are needed for effective teams. For example, avoid blaming and complaining. Critical chain, when things go bad, that is not meeting commitments, the team rushes to help, not blame. So incentive to hide problems and look for scapegoats is greatly reduced. Critical chain simplifies the complex interactions and effects of task durations differing from the aggressive estimates during execution via the fever chart. The fever chart plots the percent project buffer consumed against the percent of the total critical chain completed. The chart shown here shows the project near its completion. Each corner shows where an update was provided. This example of a fever chart provides a snapshot earlier in a project. Each filled in box represents where a project update occurred. In this case, the initial critical chain tasks were completed ahead of their aggressive durations on average. Then some later task experienced delay that caused some project buffer penetration. Since the overall buffer penetration is in the yellow, the overall project is in good shape and no intervention may be needed. The other indicator that helps the project manager is the trend of the chart. When the trend is more vertical, it may be a cause for concern. In this case, even though the chart jumped only into the yellow, the rate that the buffer consumption occurred would warrant further investigation. Now that we have looked at the workings of critical chain project management, let's pause and take a look at a few more of the many success stories. For a multi-project environment, we want to make sure the benefits of critical chain are retained. This is done by pipelining the projects to avoid bad multitasking. There is only so much capacity to do work. We will refer to this as the finite capacity pipeline. Projects are allowed to start only if there is enough capacity to prevent multitasking. Due dates are derived by the pipeline, not by promises. Note the down pointing arrows near the top are the derived delivery dates. The multi-project fever chart allows executive management and others to see the status of a portfolio of projects. Each dot in this fever chart shows the current status of an individual project. If more detail is desired for a particular project, one can drill down to the particular project's fever chart to see its history. So buffer status drives priority decisions. Therefore, in this figure, Project 1003 would be the highest priority project. Challenges encountered when trying to introduce critical chain to an organization include the difficulty in changing people's mindset, for example, regarding multitasking, and the delay in getting improved results can lead to people giving up on the conversion prematurely. Fortunately, the benefits that have been experienced include improved project stability, speed, reliability, and the resultant business growth. 